Galatians, and this should segue right into to what, we, what we've been talking about. We went through the book of Galatians, but there's a few things I want to, and I'm not even calling it a recap because I, it really is not a recap. I just want to dig down a little deeper. I want to, there's a few things I, I looked at back in the book and I think, you know, we need to hit this again uh, for this reason. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, amen, and then repetition is the motor of learning. Uh, the more you hear it, the more it becomes a part of you. Uh, you know, you want these statements to become in the Bible. We want the statements in the Bible to become such a part of who we are. It, we, it's hard for us to distinguish where Scripture ends and where we begin. And we know it's God, but you know what I'm saying? It becomes who we are. And uh, so, so the first thing I want to talk about, and I don't know how far we'll get, but because uh, I'm going to just take my time here uh, on a couple of things. But in, in Galatians chapter 1, down at verse 6, my caption in my Bible says this. And, and, this, and if yours don't say it, maybe you should write it down in there. Only one gospel. There's only one gospel. There's only one. Verse 6 says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Paul says, I am amazed. I marvel that so quickly you turn away from the one that called you by grace. And then he's going to go into explaining why. And I want to tell you this, we have to continually renew our mind to this because nobody is off limits to the enemy trying to put this back on you. It says, which is not another, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are an angel from heaven preach another gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what, you've rece what you have received, let him be accursed. I'm going to read it again. Just a little, I want you to get this. But if we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Wow. What's the other gospel? It's, this is what's the wow. It's not so much wow that he said it. If you think about if he's saying let him be accursed and then you think about some fanatic or some madman like Jim Jones that cult guy, okay, that, you know, it don't even come, you're like, well, that's, you know, yeah, let him be accursed. But that's not what he's, I mean, yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. Cultish, I love this where he said even an angel of heaven. Did you know most religious cults say they were visited by an angel? What Paul say over 2,000 years ago, he said, let him be accursed. It's not the gospel. And some people play around with this stuff like it's nothing. I've known people that play around with the Book of Mormons like it's like, just, just, just the Mormons. They're good people. I'm not denying they're good people, but this is another gospel. It's not the one I believe. But let's drill on down a little bit. Let, what else is it? When you're preaching legalism, it's another gospel. Jesus plus anything is another gospel. And the Bible says, let them be accursed. That's strong words. Now, we're going we're gonna to get some clarification in this. And I, if I can get out of my spirit what's in there, out of my mouth and into your ears and in your heart, we'll see a transformation in all of us. I don't know that I can do it. I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help me. I know, I'm just being totally honest here. I know what I want to say and I know what I need to say, but I don't know if I can get it out like I need to. I know what I believe, 
I know what's in there. Sometimes it's hard to articulate because you're dealing with something that is so precious and so valuable to people. Accursed is we kind of get that, you know, they're cursed. Well, let me just, I think I just got it where you just grab a hold of it. When you're preaching or receiving or walking in any other gospel, you're going to fall under the curse. I had a friend of mine call me one time from down in South Carolina, a pastor. We were talking, and uh, he'd been pretty legalistic about faith. I mean, well, let me re <laughs> the Holy Spirit said to go ahead and <laughs> retract that and say it the way he said it. He'd been real legalistic about faith. Part of the confession police and all of that. And he was at dire straits he, he, financially and everything else just falling apart with him. And we were on the phone this was several years ago. And he's telling me, and this was a guy that really helped change my life many years ago or really spoke a word in due season to me on the phone back when I went to Agape Faith back, what, 2000, no, 1999 or something. And uh, God had used him to speak a word into my life, a powerful word. And uh, directional type thing. Well, anyway, this guy was saying, he said, Pastor, he said, I, I, uh, I've been struggling to try to get this thing to work. <laughs> he said, and then I just let go and received the grace of God. And he said, I can't even tell you what's happening in my life right now. It's, it's beyond what I ever thought possible. What did he do? He got out of the way so Jesus could do what he done. What was he doing? It wasn't that he was cursed. He was walking in the curse because he wasn't walking in grace. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden's light. And we have to stop ourselves when it's not. Now, I'm not, talking about, I'm, not, I'm not talking about life. We talked about that. I don't remember what service some time back. And I think it may have been Galatians. But we, we help each other with our burdens, but we also carry a burden. Life has a burden to it. You have a, a job. You have certain things you have to do. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you keep pressing into something because it's tradition. That's the way you've been taught. And you keep fighting something, and really it's not grace. It's, just, it's something else. Be, 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 be plumb aware, be, be alert to this. If you're trying the same old thing all the time with no results, go back to the gospel. Jesus plus anything is another gospel. This is why we have to receive, not talk him into something. Paul said there'll be a curse. As we've said before, so I say again, if anyone preaches another gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. Now, let's keep moving. Paul said in, in chapter 2, and I'm going somewhere, but I want, to, I want to take a couple stops on the way there. In chapter 2, verse 5, he said, To whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. The reason I point that out is you and I would not think for a minute to go back to our old life even for a half an hour if, we were, if you were like I was, just an outright heathen. Don't even think about going to the bars and doing the ungodly stuff I used to do. I don't even think about wanting to do that. Paul, what he's talking about, not even for an hour, he said, I'm not even, I didn't submit to that even for an hour that I'd go back to legalism. Not going back under the law. Whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And, and, but it, it, but, it, but it, it, we have to realize the Apostle Paul was the greatest theologian of his time, and yet it was, it was that tried to get on him. So we don't feel bad that it tries to get on us. We just have to keep it off of us. You'll recognize this. There'll be people in your life. There'll be good people, great people, family members that'll suck you right back into it just like that. Paul said, don't even submit to it for an hour. Why? Because it's cursed. 
They're not, listen, I'm not talking about people. But we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. I'm not talking about pe- the, the, anything other than the gospel's cursed. That's why they call it blessed assurance. It's blessed. The gospel's blessed. You're blessed. You're not trying to get blessed. You're blessed. There's a, there's a paradigm shift. It, once you make it, Once you make it, it it changes everything. It doesn't mean you won't never have some things come up in your life that don't irritate you. That's a, that's that that'll happen in heaven. We still live in a cursed world, and occasionally we're not we're not fully in the spirit, or we're not fully engaged, and the cursed world may touch us. But but listen, we just not for an hour. We just go back to grace. Go back to being thankful. Paul said, I didn't even submit to it for an hour. Verse 20 of chapter 2 says this. I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the good works I do. For he loved me, but I'm giving myself for him. Is that what your translation says? I wouldn't submit to that nonsense for a half an hour. Let's read it for real here. It said, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, by faith, everybody say by by faith, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I live by that principle. I don't live by what I do right or wrong. Should I do right, that's obvious. Go to James, not now, but he'll tell you all about that. But it's none of that living right is to try to get something from God or, or be right with God. I'm right with God because I accepted Jesus. The Apostle Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's not me that's living. It's Christ living in me. Now, when Christ, when it's you no longer living, you won't get offended. You just won't. I didn't say they won't come because the Bible says offense will come. It's a, it's a promise. It's, 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 it's a commitment. It'll, it'll happen to you. But you won't take it. Why? Because it's, it's not you anymore. We all have, how many of you, this Let's say in the last two weeks, how many of you have had an opportunity to, to take an offense? Come on, don't lie. It's Wednesday night. You done, you done weathered the storm to get here. I mean, you are the, you're the elect. I mean, you've, you've done, you done went through the rains and the sleets to get here, the cold weather and everything. We all, I could ask that question every two weeks. And I don't know that everybody's hand will go up, but a lot will. Why? Because the Bible said offense will come. But when you walk around like a dead man or a woman, you don't take them. The moment you take them, you start to die. Spiritually. You start to walk in the curse. Doesn't mean you're cursed. It means you stepped out of the blessing. Why? Because you can't receive what he's got. He didn't change anything. He's still pouring. David wasn't lying. He said, my cup runs over. God's always pouring. He's always speaking. It's just like your TV at home right now. It may be turned off. But I promise you, there's a signal there. All you got to do is turn it on. Well, guess what? God's always speaking. Always. He's always got something to say when we got our hearts open. He said, the day that you seek me with your whole heart, I'll be found. We've been crucified with Christ, and we live by the faith in the Son of God. What faith in the Son of God? Well, some of the stuff we've been talking about tonight. Number one, that he is the Son of God, and he's the only way. It's amazing over my lifetime with Christ how many people I've met were still wrestling with some of that nonsense. 
And you say, how do you know there's wrestling with it? Well, just through conversation. You can locate people. You don't, have to be, you don't have to be that brilliant to locate where people's at when you hear them start talking. Well, I, I mean, yeah, but I know what you're saying, Pastor. There's only one gospel, but, but what about these people? And what about these people? And what about this person? And what about this situation? And what about that situation? And what they're really saying is, I, I don't know. And James said it this way. He said, let a waver man think he get anything from God. No, the gospel's the gospel, and it's only one. And people say, well, that offends people. Well, they need to take that up with Jesus. We didn't invent the gospel. This thing that just happened, this tragedy in, in Texas. You see, you see the spirit of Antichrist is just running rapid in the earth. Not just from the shooter, but from the backlash of the left and some of these liberals condemning prayer. What is that? That's the spirit of Antichrist. I didn't say they were the Antichrist. I'm saying it's the spirit that's unleashed on America, on the world. And what's the church want to do? We want, <laughs> it's so funny to me. I get tickled every time I think about it. We want to fix that. And all we need to do is read this. You're not going to fix that. Jesus said, all those who believe in me and believe in the one gospel, I'll become a rock they can stand on and they've got their head lifted up, the veil's torn, there is no other name, there's no equal, there's no rival, and then people's going to walk in the blessing and the favor of God. The ones that reject me, I'll become a rock of all fence and, it, and nothing's going to change them. One gospel. And we live it by the faith in the Son of God. Verse 21. I love this. Man, this is powerful. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness come through the law, then Christ died in vain. <laughs> I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. What's the law? Anything you use to replace Christ. Jesus plus anything is the law. It's not faith. It's not grace. Oh, when we get a hold of grace, when we realize as the Apostle Paul did, I am what I am. By the grace of God, not by, I mean, and I mean, that's, it's a powerful statement for any of us to make, but when you're the Apostle Paul, it's a huge statement. If you don't believe it, go to Philippians, not now, but read Philippians 2, where he talks about his resume. He beat a man. A Hebrew of Hebrews, of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised the eighth day taught at the feet of Gamaliel as a, as a Pharisee touching the law, blameless. And then he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. <laughs> None of that accounted nothing but dung. And I don't have to tell you what dung is. He said, I counted all lost for the excellency of Christ. It's amazing, isn't it? I think I shared this with you. The minister's conference I was in out in, um, in Woodland Park recently, Andrew Womack told all of us pastors and ministers from all over the world, people from everywhere, first night he preached. I mean, we're at his place. How hospitable is this? He looked at all of us. He said, you're all just a big old zero with the rim knocked out. Without Christ, that's all of us. The Apostle Paul. But with Christ and walking in the grace of God, you can walk on water. You can move mountains. You can, you can do the impossible. Why? Because it's, it's the wind of God behind you. You can speak the things and they change. 
And the thing, here's the cool thing, the things that don't change because they don't need to change, you know how to walk through them now and your whole attitude changes. I do not set aside, everybody say this, I will not accept another gospel. There's only one. And that's Jesus. And that's Jesus. Jesus is the only gospel. It's the only religion. Why? Because it's the only one that doesn't put any merit on you. Every false religion in the world is about a man or about something somebody does. Now, there's, there, there's a lot that's distorted the gospel, myself included, in the early years that made it had to be more than just Christ, but it's not. It, again, it doesn't mean we don't do more. You have to go to James and he'll break that down for you. But we do more. We live right. We live a righteous life, a holy life, not, not to, to obtain something, but we do it because we have obtained something. I've been translated. Now I'm being transformed. And I'll be continuing to be transformed till he comes. That never changes. That's just, a, that's why Paul said I die daily. I, there's things that I'm learning. There's things that we're, that we're getting better at. That life is easier. The, see, the more we know about how to apply the principles of God, the easier our life gets. Be no different than going into any kingdom. If you go into a, any kingdom in the world and you don't know how that kingdom works, it's going to be pretty hard for you. If you don't know the language, if you don't know the currency and you don't have any of the currency and you don't have the right paperwork to get there and you don't know all of this stuff, it's going to be tough. Well, it's tough. It's tough in the kingdom if you don't know there's only one gospel and you know everything's appropriated by faith which is nothing more than receiving what he's already done. So here, here's what Paul says in, in chapter 3. He says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? You that should not obey the, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has clearly portrayed among you crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive, listen to this question, and it's for us. It was for the Galatians, but it's for us too. Listen to it closely. It says this, this question, it says, Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? When you got saved, was it because you had done everything right and it just happened or did you do like everybody I've ever known that got saved? You realized you'd come to the end of yourself and you needed a Savior. Wasn't no law part of that. I was so rotten. I didn't even, and like, a, uh, maybe not in here, but a lot of people, I was so rotten. I was, it was still too good to be true gospel. Why? How could he save a wretch like me? Based on nothing I had done. Paul said, did you, did you start out with the law or did you start out in the spirit? Did you receive it by faith or did you work your way into it? Are you so foolish? Kenneth Reist, Weist, no, no, I'm sorry. Um, no, I was looking at that translation. Uh, Eugene Peters wrote the Message Bible. He said it this way, are you that crazy? Are you that crazy? I was reading that translation earlier. I thought, that, he's pretty serious. Paul said, are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? You start out in the Spirit, but now are you being made perfect by the flesh? Is what you do what matters? No, we appropriate God's grace every day. Lord, I can't do this without you. And see, that's the, that's the way it is. You can't do it without him, and he refuses to do it without you. It's a partnership. 
working hand in hand, side by side. This, you know, the, I'm going to just share this with you. You know, one of the simplest revelations I ever learned that changed my life probably as much as anything is the day I realized and got a revelation God was not trying to keep anything from me. That was huge to me. Why? Because I grew up in a church where we begged God so much. I mean, I just thought he was like, here's two pictures I had of God. He was holding every blessing that I could ever see like this, and I had to talk him into letting it go. The other God I seen was with a big old club just waiting for me to miss it so he could knock me out of the park. And neither is the God we serve. <laughs> he said, I think about you more than the sands of the sea. You're right here on, the, on his mind all the time. The way I relate to that is I remember you do too when you was in grade school. That first boy or girl that tur turned your head, you couldn't do nothing but think about them. Well, that's the way God is with you all the time. He's, uh, he's constantly thinking about you. Have you suffered, so, verse 4, so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God. That's what was counted to him as righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. I'm not trying to split hairs here. I'm not trying to... But, I mean, technically, when the world says we're all sons of Abraham, not according to Scripture. It's the ones that are of faith. Why? Because we brought ourselves into that covenant by accepting Christ. And that covenant is powerful. I want to talk to you before we've got a few minutes here. Uh, don't let me forget this, Pastor Ed. Remind me if I do about the covenant with Abraham. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham, verse 8. And the scripture, foreseeing God who justified the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham before saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed by believing with, I'm sorry, with believing Abraham. For as many of you as the works of the law are under the curse, there it is again, when you work the works of the law, when you try to perform and you make it a performance-based gospel, you're walking in the curse. He said, my yoke's easy. My burden's light. <sighs> Take a breath. I have a reminder right on the other side of that door to breathe when I walk in here. What is it? It's our first time attender card. The two beach chairs sitting at the ocean. I remember when God gave us the revelation. I remember, I was, matter of fact, I was looking on, while I was waiting on the, uh, the guy to put in the internet today. Um, I'm playing on the old com desktop back there, just looking at some of the old files. And I seen the first file where we printed that card many years ago. But I remember, see, it wasn't about the card. I remember the revelation I got right then. The revelation was that's the picture I, God wanted me to have of him sitting in a beach chair looking at the ocean rather than mock two with my hair, hair on fire wondering what was going to happen to my life. He's a good God. He wants good things for us. Mm -hmm.